Peter, Paul and Mary were terrible stinkers. Peter was a tiny little toad who'd always got a runny nose and he was always going... <laughs> Paul was a middle-sized toad who never said please or thank you and was always knocking his food on the floor. And Mary was the biggest, fattest, ugliest toad you've ever seen in your life. Peter, Paul and Mary were looking for some fun, so they hopped into Fat Tulip's garden. Flip, went Peter. Flop, went Paul. <laughs> went Mary. Right, lad, she said. I can see we're going to have a good time here. Yeah, said Peter. But it's full of flowers. Oh, I hate flowers. They're all colours. Oh, they're nasty and bright. It really hurts my eyes. And smell them, Paul. And Paul went... Oh, flowers, really pong. Ugh, they stink. It's right up my nose. Yeah, said Peter. Why do people put disgusting things like this in their garden? Why don't they plant nice dead leaves and old newspapers and tin cans? Look at that burnt out old bonfire, said Peter. Now that looks a bit better, don't it? Yeah, said Paul. And smell the smell of that compost here. Now that's what I call a really nice pot. You're right, lads, my lovely lads, said Mary. It's a terrific place, but we've got to get rid of these flowers, haven't we? Tonight, when everyone's asleep, We'll pull up the peonies, we'll tear up the turf, and we'll rip up the roses. What? said Peter. Like this? <laughs> yeah, said Mary. And like this. <laughs> Next morning, Ernie and Sylv, the two frogs who lived in Fat Tulip's lily pond, stared at what had happened to their garden. What? Look at that, said Ernie. There's not one single flower left. Whoever's done this must be terrible stinkers. They've left absolutely nothing. Except that, said Sylv. And there, over in the big stone, there was one single, solitary, lonely daisy, still standing. The terrible stinkers will come back for this, said Sylv. And when they do, we could capture them and make them put everything back just the way it was. We'll hide behind this stone and then we'll jump out on them. And so they waited. Sometimes Ernie kept guard and sometimes Sylvie kept guard. But nobody came and after a while, they got really bored. What? Sylve! said Ern. What? I'm hungry. What do you want? A biscuit. Well, go and get it then. No, you go. 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 All right. Won't be long. Bye. And off she went to get the biscuit. Oh, um, uh, Sylve, Sylve, um, what do I do if the terrible stinkers uh, come to get the flower before you get back? I mean, I can't capture them on my own, can I? What? And Sylvia said, look, if the terrible stinkers come, whistle three times and then jump in the Wendy house and I'll come back and help you. Right, said Ern. And off Sylvie trotted. Whew, now, uh, what do I have to do, said Ernie? Uh, when the terrible stinkers come, I Wendy three times and whistle in the hat. No, um, when the terrible whistles come, I stink three times and house in the when. No, what? Well, when the terrible stinkers come, uh, I whistle three times and jump in the Wendy house. Right, uh, whistle. Uh, I'll practice uh, whistling. Uh, whistle. Uh, Well, no, that's not it, is it? Um, uh, no, that, uh, that's not a whistle. Uh, I can't whistle. I don't know how to whistle. What am I going to do if the terrible stink has come and still uh, has, hasn't come back? Uh, they'll do something horrible to me. Like they're probably enormous giants with big, sharp teeth. 
Now, just at that moment, Sylve was coming back down the path with the squash fly biscuits, and her footsteps went chunk, 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 chunk. Oh no, thought Ernie. What? It's the terrible stinkers! And he jumped off the stone and raced to the Wendy house. Deep in the Wendy house, Ernie heard a noise. Who are you? It went. It was Peter, Paul and Mary. Shh, said Ernie. I'm hiding from the terrible stinkers. Who are they? They're the terrible stinkers who ripped up our roses. Oh, said Mary. That was me. Well, why did you do it? Said Ern. I can do what I like, said Mary, cos I'm so grown up. I can wash my socks when I like. I can go to bed when I like. I can rip up the roses when I like. Whoa, thought Ernie. These really are terrible stinkers. Now, I've got to whistle three times and then Sylve will come. Right. <laughs> Pardon, said Peter. Oh, no, thought Ernie. I can't whistle. Then he had a plan. But Mary, he said, can you really do what you like when you like? Yeah, said Mary. Can you even whistle when you like? Easy peasy, said Mary. Look. Uh, what was that, said Ern? <whistles> Pardon, said Ern. <whistles> Meanwhile, at the other end of the garden, Sylvie still couldn't find Ernie anywhere. Suddenly, she heard the three whistles. <gasps> she thought, that must be Ernie in the Wendy house, and she raced across the garden. Ernie jumped out of the window. They're here! They're here, Bob, he said. It's Peter, Paul and Mary. They're the terrible stinkers. You three, said Syl. Well, come and see what you've done. This place is ruined. Put all the garden back immediately. And the three toads said, No. What? No. Oh, dear, thought Ernie. What? Well, what are we going to do now? Just at that moment, Sylvie saw Fat Tulip's dog Dorian out of the corner of her eye, down the other end of the orchard. He was sniffing about in the roots of a tree. He'd started to dig a hole. You see that dog, said Sylve. That dog is so cross with you that he's digging a pit to put you in when he catches you. By this time, Dorian had stopped digging a hole and was racing round the orchard, holding a big stick in his mouth. That dog is so cross with you that he's got that stick to whack you with when he catches you. Then, Dorian saw Ernie and Syl and started racing over towards them with the stick in his mouth. As he got near them, he said, Hi, everybody. Who'd like a go on my stick? And Peter and Paul said, no, no, sorry, uh, sorry, we, uh, we were just uh, tidying out the garden. Uh, yes, that's what we were doing. And Peter picked up all the roses and he put them back on their prickly stems. Ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. And Paul picked up seven million pieces of grass and stuck them back down their grass holes. And they both tidied up the trees and polished up the shrubs. And soon the whole garden was back to normal. And Ernie looked on while Peter and Paul collapsed on the garden, exhausted. And then Dorian said, Oh, you finished. Fantastic. Who'd like to go on my stick now? No, said Peter. No, said Paul. And they raced out of the garden. Late that evening, Ernie and Sylve saw Mary sitting on the compost heap. You see them flowers, she said. Them's dangle lions. Dangle lions, said the frogs. Yeah, lions dangle them round their necks. What, said Ernie. You do know a lot about flowers, don't you? Yeah, said Mary. I'm the cleverest toad in the world, and the oldest, and the bravest. Just at that moment, she saw Dorian bounding towards her, carrying his stick in his mouth. Uh, I think I'll be going now, said Mary, and whoo, she scooted out of the garden. Yeah, said Sylph, and you're the fastest toad in the world, aren't you? Bye.